the criminal legislation, the crime bill stuff, he gets dinged a lot and we all, oh, well, he authored the crime bill. We That's one of those things that we say all the time. I say it all the time. But we have no idea the facts about some of that stuff. This is like one of those things that we say that we heard on a podcast, but and I'm sure it's true because I trust that podcast I listen to, but I don't know any of the details. Now, I will say... All of these show notes and all of these facts and figures and all that stuff will be in a PDF in the show notes. So if you want, if you're like, I heard that on that podcast and I want to look this up and cite that source, we're going to have that for you in the show notes. Make sure you grab that there. Uh, just another service. Thank you to our Patreons. Uh, and thank you especially to Sam Schultz, who wrote these great notes and prepared all this and just does an amazing job as our uh, chief researcher and head of our research team. And uh, we sound so much smarter. Thanks to Sam. Uh, at least I do anyways. Uh, so in a 93 speech on the Senate floor, Joe Biden boasted, the truth is every major crime bill since 1976 that's come out of this Congress, every minor crime bill has had the name of the Democratic senator from the state of Delaware, Joe Biden. Biden has recently apologized for portions of his anti-crime legislation, but he has largely tried to downplay his involvement, saying that he got stuck with shepherding some of this stuff because he was the chairman of the Senate Judiciary Committee. Now, once you look into his record, that's complete hogwash, hokum, bunk, lies, even. Uh, he, his current characterization of his, uh, of his roles in the past are at direct odds with his statements, his actions, his voting record, uh, and you're about to see that. So... As early as 1977, Biden pushed for mandatory minimum sentences that would limit judges' discretion in sentencing. Biden also partnered with former segregationist Strom Thurmond on a string of bills that effectively rewrote the nation's criminal justice laws with an eye toward putting more criminals behind bars. When we talk about the world's largest amount of criminals incarcerated per capita in the world, in the United States prisons, it's Joe Biden's fault. He is directly responsible for that. He takes credit for it, as you just heard him say. Can you explain what a mandatory minimum is, uh, Reinhold? So mandatory minimum is basically a sentence. So the sentencing guidelines that you have with um, sentencing people who are found guilty of crimes. And a mandatory minimum is saying that for this crime, no matter what the situation, no matter what the uh, judge considers in weighing the evidence on when they're sentenced somebody that they have to be incarcerated for a specific amount of time um, for those crimes. There's, so there's no leeway. There's no under, there's no understanding from the government on it. It's a hard set, at least this much time in jail for whatever crime that is. And um, I, was he also the, the uh, part of the three strikes um, legislation as well? Or was that that came about in 90, I think that came about in 96. So yes. Yeah, so he's part of that too. So the three strikes thing is basically if you get, uh, or if you found guilty for for the same crime three times, you're you're getting like life in prison. You know, you're considered un un um, unfixable at that point, right? So they just remove you from society. So even if they're minor crimes, you know, like a possession or the drug war, where we get into um, things that really shouldn't be crimes. Or things that uh, they, it was that everybody was doing, but they decided to stick on these other people because those people are of a, a a different group that we want to try and silence. You know, that's that's how that stuff comes about. So that just gives the power of the government, you know, government to the power power to the government to say, hey, we're we're going to be hard on crime uh, when really what they're doing is they're they're taking away all the empathy and understanding of why people do certain things or get caught doing certain things uh, and having that take place as part of the, uh, the thought process and sentencing of those people. Yeah. Uh, they're, not, they're not trying to rehab them at that point. They're trying to house them. They're trying to punish them. Right. Yeah. As Brian says, uh, three felonies, not three felonies. Same crime. Yeah. Yeah, beat me too. Um, right. So, in 1989, Biden lamented that Republican President George H.W. Bush was not doing enough to put, quote, violent thugs in prison. 
1993, he warned of, quote, predators on our streets, end quote. And in 94, in a Senate floor speech, he said, quote, every time Richard Nixon, when he was running in 72, would say law and order, the Democratic match or response was law and order with justice. Whatever that meant, I would say lock the SOB up. That sounds That's very right. familiar to, uh, you know, what I remember hearing over the past four years about. Right. You know, right. here's what you have to understand as we go through this section. Context. Donald Trump is Joe Biden in 1984. <laughs> right. they, they really are. To be fair to Joe, to be fair to Joe, the 92 riots just did happen. <laughs> right. Yeah. Right. Okay. Like that's the horror of the 92 LA, the, the riots of that's the, the, the American public just watched these riots happen. In displayed on tv um i was in second grade at the time when this when these riots happened and those images still stick in my head of watching that on tv but, but you gotta remember uh, to take away from that joe biden also got elected during the time of the 68 riots and the vietnam and the kent state and all the other stuff that was going on so it's kind of hard for him to say oh i was just you know we hadn't seen anything like this before malarkey <laughs> exactly right he's never seen anything. <laughs> all right fair point right home fair point <laughs> all right <laughs> wow uh right just shot my, my my help for uh buying the crap thank you appreciate it no he's i mean he doesn't deserve it on this one you know i think yeah. i think opinion. about that yeah yeah. The stuff that happens in the 90s it's e and some of the 80s is easy for me to put in context of what happened around after that. It's kind of like, you know, even Kent State just seems like, oh, that's, that's history stuff. Right. Yeah. It's old times. Old times. I was, I was seven, eight years old when that happened, six years old, something like that. Old timey. So, old timey. <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, lock the SOBs up in 93. Biden said it doesn't matter whether or not they're victims of society. I don't want to ask what made them do this. They just must be taken off the streets. Uh, <laughs> he's a, he, eight, 93 Biden's a real treat in 77. While in charge of the subcommittee overseeing prisons and sentencing, Biden pushed to narrow judicial discretion by creating a commission to set presumptive sentences and to eliminate pardons and parole so you pay for those folks to stay in incarcerated longer less time they're out working less time they're building skills less time they're taking care of their family less time they're uh yeah it's really crazy and the um, incentive for them to even act in, in any good way within the jail system is taken away so now they have no reason to not just be complete you know psychopaths in jail if you're if you're telling them that good good behavior and parole and proving that you have re rehabilitated isn't isn't uh, taken into account why why do anything at that point right his aim he told the wilmington evening journal was equitable and definitive sentences for all including defendants who quote don't meet the middle class criteria of susceptibility to rehabilitation there's no other way, Harry, to read that other than white middle class people are the standard for society. And if you don't meet their standards, you're not welcome here. Western civilization tells us, right? I mean, isn't the same thing, right? Um, I'm just waiting for the part where he says, and we should deport them back to where they came from. Right. And it would be just right. like uh, it could have been written last year for, for a, a Trump speech. Come on, man. Wow. Wow, uh, it was lit. <laughs> 1984 crime bill. In 84, he was the Democratic floor manager for the successful passage of the Comprehensive Crime Control Act, the controversial tough on crime bill. The CCCA of 84 was the first comprehensive revision of the U.S. criminal code since the early 1900s and was signed into law by Ronald Reagan. So F you states, F you local governments, the federal government under Ronald Reagan, the great liberator, the, libertarian the great libertarian hope is going to uh, <laughs> assume control of, of all of your uh, judicial. So they reformed the federal code. This act established mandatory minimum sentences for drug offenses. Among it, 
uh, its other constituent parts and provisions were the Armed Career Criminal Act, Sentencing Reform Act, which created the United States Sentencing Commission, extension of the Secret Service's jurisdiction over credit card fraud and computer fraud, increased penalties for cultivation, possession, or transfer of marijuana, uh. a new section in the criminal code for hostage taking, and stipulations about using civil forfeiture to seize assets of organized crime. We've talked a lot about civil there asset you forfeiture. Go. That's the one. That, oh my god. <laughs> yep. That's where it started. It didn't start with with terrorism. It was started with organized crime back in the 80s. And Joe Biden. Oh my god. Biden yeah. also served as a ranking minority member of the Judiciary Committee. I can't say that word. Uh, on the passage of the 1986 Anti-Drug Abuse Act, this act created much harsher sentences for possession of crack than for powder cocaine. How many times have you heard Black Lives Matter activists talk about this stuff? Mm -hmm. This is the this is like the go to that people talk about when they're talking about, you know, the the pipe, the the, the revolving door of prison, racism. institutional right. racism, systemic racism. Mm -hmm. Joe Biden was the head of the committee that passed this act. The act mandated a minimum sentence of five years without parole for possession of five grams of crack cocaine, while it mandated the same possession for 500 grams of powder cocaine. That is a 100 to 1 disparity and was reduced to 18 to 1 when crack was de increased to 28 gram grams by the Fair Sentencing Act of 2010. So it disproportionately affected the black community by a 2002 report to Congress from the U.S. Sentencing Commission found that in 92, 91.4% of federal crack cocaine offenders were black. Mm -hmm. Now, in the 1994 crime bill, which you've heard a lot about, Biden chaired the Senate Judiciary Committee again during the passage of the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act. Biden helped author and was a major proponent of the vast catch-all tough-on-crime bill. In Senate's floor speeches in 1993-94, Biden spoke openly of wanting to rid Democrats of their reputation as being soft on crime. He said, one of the things I want to do in addition to end crime is to end the political carnage that goes when we talk about crime. This is one of those issues that I hope after this bill will be moved out of the gridlock category and into an emerging consensus. The bill he helped fashion was a vast catch-all bill that has a string of punitive measures desired by law enforcement. The bill was basically written by law enforcement in the wake of things like the L.A. riots. It banned assault weapons, created 60 new death penalty offenses, stripped federal inmates of the right to attain educational Pell Grants, gave states incentives to build prisons, set aside money for 100,000 new police officers, and codified the three strikes rule. The law imposed tougher prison sentences at the federal level and encouraged states to do the same. It also backed grant, pro grant programs that encouraged police officers to carry out more drug-related arrests and escalation of the war on drugs. Now, in a speech on the Senate floor, Biden said the telephones in the state of Delaware are ringing off the hook. They're not talking about pork or pork chops or anything else. He's always been this way. They're saying, pass the crime bill, give me 100,000 cops, build more prisons, and get on with it. Very Dickinsonian, this guy. On the website in, for his 2008 presidential campaign, Biden referred to the 94 crime bill law as the Biden crime law and bragged that it encouraged states to effectively increase their prison sentences by paying them to build more prisons. Ooh. That's rough. Ooh. Oof. That is... Oh, man, it's just terrible. <laughs> it's just like everything that you've known to be just bad. It is everything that, A, libertarians are against, and, B, everything that Black Lives Matter is against. And, like, not for nothing, Donald Trump and, and his efforts for criminal justice reform and his conversations with people like Kim and Kanye West has been way more open to criminal justice reform than any other modern president. Like this will be, we'll cover this next week when we talk about Trump, because this is one of the positive things about Donald Trump. And I think when he says, I've, I've done more for black people than anyone ever before, that is kind of what he's talking about. But, you know, it's been, it's been minor at best, but when you, when you compare on, and, in terms of the goals of 
ending what is cause it what what is systemic racism joe biden ain't the dude he is the guy who created this stuff and then he's going to pick kamala harris as his vp potentially this week who is the same on all this stuff and has just as bad of a record the guy is never going to give any of uh, any of the people who want criminal justice reform joe biden may be forced into it because of a mea culpa but I can't I can't see that happening. I think he'll pivot to something like health care to fix Obamacare and undo the mistakes. And, you know, if you pick Susan Rice, that's a clear uh, identifier that he is moving towards foreign policy. And he'll go on an apology tour like Obama did from the likes we've never seen to try and fix foreign relations. Uh, I can't imagine that happening just because domestic will be so consuming with the virus. But you know, it'll be interesting to see who he picks as his VP. Like, are you going to continue this record? Are you going to, yes. Are you going to try and reform things? Probably not. Uh, or are you just going to pay it lip service and uh, do nothing with, yes. It, it's like, all right. Is Biden the man? <laughs> yes. Biden is the man. When we're fighting the man, he's the man, Harry. I just, is that what you mean? Yeah, it's like he's the man. It's just like everyone keeps like, well, the crack and does everything. Like, I think Biden's the man. <laughs> like, you're the man of, you are fighting. Yeah, you could so, like you can lay a lot of the problems with the black community at his feet and just go like, you did this. Yeah, <laughs> this is your fault. 